Yeah. Okay, so I'll use this. Get to my drawing tools. Let's go with blue. So we are going to talk about solving equations. So first of all, what is an equation? What's required to have an equation? I mean, I mean obviously, um, factors. I mean, a, a unit and and a result. Those. Exactly, key. That's the key part. We could have factors. Sometimes we could have what we call an expression. I guess that's what I meant. Just like what, whatever you would call a number in the equation. So that's an expression, but it's not an equation, right? It's not an equation until we add, or until it has an equal sign. And it's equal to something. Now, oftentimes in school, we, you know, worksheets, I'll put a blank here, so it's the equal sign says there's the answer. But that's not the kind of equation we want. We want it to be equal to something. So it's a relationship. Okay, so that equal sign, what does that equal sign mean? Basically, the result of the expression. Could. So that, what else does an equal sign mean? What does it mean to be equal? That's a deep question, huh? The same. <laughs> the same, right? The same. Ident in the math, it's identically the same. It's telling us both sides are the same. Exactly. They're equal. They're identical, in a sense. So 2x plus 4 is also 8, and 8 is also 2x plus 4. They look different, right? But they are telling us those, those have to be the same. So part of it, what it means is also, since they're the same on both sides, we could think of this equal sign as sort of a balancing beam. Since both sides are the same, if, if they were weights, they'd be the same weights and they'd be perfectly balanced, right? Mm -hmm. So have you ever played this game with your, I, I, was, I came from a family of five kids. I, was, I had an older sister, myself, and then younger brothers. Get to the playground on the seesaw. You put the younger kids on this side. How many of you can keep me down? You know, so, but once you get balanced, what happens if you take someone off of one side? They still have seesaws, don't they? Mm. Teeter-totters, whatever you call those things, right? You take one person, you know, so you got balance, but you take someone off, what happens? They lose their balance. They're no longer balanced. The other side's heavier. So if you want to keep balance, what do you have to do? If you take something, what's that? Make it equal. Make it equal. So do whatever you do to one side, you got to do to the other. So if you take some off here, you got to take some off there. If you add one here, you got to add something there. It's same, so to, you got to keep it equal. And as long as you do that, you'll keep your balance. And that's the key, what we do for solving equations. We can do anything we like, as long as we do it to both sides. Okay, so that's the first thing. Now, how many of you, growing up, were a little bit rebellious? Like, your mom would tell you to clean your room, and you wouldn't clean your room. Yeah, that's me. <laughs> I'll do this, you know, you find ways. I'll, can you get me some ice? We'll get some ice cream if I give you a room. How about you give me the ice cream first, then I'll give me the motivation to clean my room. Uh, she did that one time, but she found after the ice cream was had, the rooms didn't get clean. Uh, good intentions. But so if you're a little bit rebellious, you're going to be great at algebra, because what do we do in algebra to solve? We're going to do the opposite. Whatever we're told, we're going to do the opposite. So let's just take this one for instance, 2x plus 4 equals 8. When we're talking about solving, what we're trying to do is get this little thing that, what, what is it, what do we call that thing? A variable. It's a variable. It means, it's also, we could call it an unknown, uh, but it's, a, it's, it's a really just a marker for a place. So don't think so much it's a letter, although it is, uh, but it's just a, it's a space for something that we don't know yet. And what we're solving for is we, we wanna figure out what goes there, what number goes there, right? 
So the way we do that is we want eventually to get it by itself and then just have a number over here and, and then it really is that variable is equal to a particular number and that number is going to be when we replace it gives us everything. But what we're going to do to make all that happen to get it by itself is we got to undo other things. Like we're, what are we doing to this x right now? Multiplying by 2 and adding 4. And remember PEMDAS parentheses exponents. So order of operations, we're going to blast that out. We're not going to do that. Uh, one of my colleagues did this. So parentheses exponents, multiplication, division, adding, adding and subtracting. But we back, so. yeah, that's, <laughs> which I think, yeah, <laughs> I just old. think, yeah, we kind of get, but what one of my friends here teaches calculus, he says, so when you solve equations, what you do is you do it backwards, you do sad map, whatever that is, it sounds different. So we're going to, we're going to deal with the subtraction addition first, then we'll deal with multiplication division exponents and parentheses. So what we're going to do is we're going to do everything backwards. So we're going to, instead of adding 4, we're going to subtract 4. And we're going to deal with that part first because it's back, everything's backwards. Again, we got to be rebels without a cause in math, right? So, but we did it to one side. What do we got to do? Do it to the other side. Otherwise, we lose our balance and it's no longer equal. But now we're going to keep them the same. So I just like to do it right underneath like that. So what is positive 4 and negative 4 when we combine them? Zero. Zero. That's why we chose. We could have done any number. We could have subtracted five, but that wouldn't really have gotten us the process. What we're trying to do is say, okay, what would get rid of that plus four? And we found that, oh, that's zero. So now we've got two x. And then eight minus four is just the result. Four. Positive four. Now what's the next thing we're going to do that's the opposite of what so we're told? We have two x, that will be two times x. Opposite multiplication, division. Good. So we divide two by two. And if we did that to one side, better do it to the other side, right? So whatever we do to one, we do to the other. It's and that's all it is. It's the one side sort of telling us what to do. So we divide by two, and two divided by two is one. So now we're down to just one x, right? One x. Uh, and then the other side we've got four divided by two. We're left with two. So we have just solved this equation. We know that when we plug x equals 2, if we plug it up here, we'll get 2 times 2 plus 4. Oh, yeah, that does equal 8. That's 4 plus 4, which is 8. So it'll work. So that's the nice thing about solving for equations. Once we've got our answer, we can always do a check. Although if it gets more complicated, I'll be honest, I don't always check it, especially if it's got fractions. I just be careful when I work it out. But again, all we're doing is looking at one side and undoing it. Okay. So let's, and again, the, in the text, what you'll see is they'll start with what they call one step equations. So what do we do here? Yeah, all there is to do is we're multiplying by three. Again, think about what we're doing. Okay, I'm going to. Divide. Multiplication, division are opposites. So divide both sides by 3. And that gives us 5. We're done. So let me, that's, a, that's a one step process. We could add or subtract. Okay. We went to the two step process. And we're going to go, let's see, what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask you try this thank you let's just do this one so this is a tricky one what's the tricky what's different about that we'll maybe talk through this one I guess there's two x's, there's two x's and they're on either side of the equal side so what are what do we call x's? What do we call it? Like the two x and the three x. There's a a word we use for these kind of things that we might have learned back in middle school. 
components. How about the, uh, I know I'm just kind of fishing, but have you, the like terms, right? Uh, Component, yes, components, are, are there like terms so we're able to add them? Or we're able to, maybe it wasn't middle school, maybe it was some of it, but anyway, we probably heard this thing of like terms, right? So I like to think they're separated, right? Is it, uh, so their like terms are kind of like relations, they're like family. Is it, is it nice to keep families separated? Well, this is a little bit of politics, but we do. It's not. So what could be our first thing to do? Could we reunite the family? Uh, don't you just um, subtract the exes from each other? Well, they're being multiplied. We good idea. That's around the. So, what would be your suggest? What should we subtract? Or subtract two x. Two x. Okay. Yeah. That, so uh, the whole kind of yeah the whole. That's, that's what I meant. Like good. Subtract two x from both sides. Excellent. I, I should have said it. No, no. I I just wanted to be. You were fine. So. Because that'll cancel this out, right? 2x minus 2x, and then 3x minus 2x, we're now it's done. Just it's just x. Whoa, we're done real quick. But we had to, the key is, is to bring those x's together, get them on the same side. Now, could we have subtracted 3x from both sides? Well, we yeah. could have, but that would have resulted okay. in negative. We could. Again, I want you to remember, we can do anything we want. We would have got a negative. We also would have got a bunch of stuff on one side, and we would have had zero on the other, so we still would have had some work to do. So, but it's nothing wrong with doing that. And it might be, we, you know, when we go thinking of how we're going to solve something, we might do an, have to do an extra one or two steps, but as long as we got x equals negative 5, we're good. We might have done it different than somebody else, but that's okay. Okay, but kind of go forward with what you're doing. But when we've got X's on both sides, one of the things we want to do is bring them together. So this is, uh, let me put a next one up here. Uh, let's go with uh, 4X minus 6 equals 7X plus 8. So it's a little more complicated. And again, we're thinking, PIM, you know, we're doing the reverse of PIMDAS, but what's your suggestion for where should we start? Um, you just, uh, well, add the six to both sides, and then... You then, could. Yeah, and then after that, when you just um, subtract four from... Four. There we go, we got, so we got the family, go ahead. Oh, um, subtract 4x from both sides. Okay, so deal with the fact that the exit, that like terms are on opposite sides of the equal side, opposite sides of the river. Let's get them together first. So either subtract 4x or subtract 7x if you want. You could go either way, um, but get the x's. And, and it's not wrong with uh, uh, it's Daniel, right? Yeah. Okay. It's not what you were saying was not wrong, but a lot of students will try that they'll add six to both sides first, and then they'll go, okay, now what do I do? So I'm just saying, if you deal with the uh, deal with getting the x's together first, it'll be less um, less work, less work, and less less decisions to make down the road, right? So. We'll see how that, because then all of a sudden, it's like now we've got one way to go. But as soon as, when you've got X's on both sides, you've, you've got to decide, where, do you want to go left to right or right to left? And what ends up happening is that students will go back both and forth and oftentimes have a few extra steps in there. Again, it's not a problem, but as soon as we get both, all everything with an X on the same side, now it's, Pretty clear. We're solving for x, so we are going to, you know, and I like to box in my x, get everything out of there. I think x guy is like the grumpy old man who's, you know, party's over, everybody go home, right? So, how do we get everybody out of the house from x? We will do that, but subtract eight. Right, because we'd have to divide everything by three first. So again, we want to deal with the addition subtraction first. Again, it's not that it's wrong; it just gets messy real quick if we divide first. So we'll want to subtract the eight. 
and I'll show you over here. So to do it right, if we divided by three first, we really have to divide everything by three because of the way division is. It, it would distribute here, and then we get eight thirds. Who wants to deal with eight thirds? I don't. Now, sometimes we'll have to deal with the fraction, but if we can wait till the end, that's my, okay. So that's why we deal with the subtraction first. So the negative six and negative eight. Now here's a problem, or it could be a problem. How many of you are looking eight minus, or six minus eight and thinking two, because it's the difference between them. But they're both negative, so what's gonna happen? Negative we add them together, they could become more negative. And this is not the case where two negatives make a positive. That's with multiplication. So, um, and again, we're all at different places, but we, you know, we remember different things and we have different struggles. But that's, yeah, sometimes I'll look at that. Yes, okay, they're both negative, so the signs are the same. We're really gonna add them, and they just got more negative. Okay. And then three X over here. And then this eight minus eight becomes zero, so that's gone. Now we want to divide by three and see it's gonna, we are gonna be left with a fraction, but it's, now we don't have to worry about it at this point, right? Divide both sides by three now, and we don't have to worry about that. So then we get our x equals negative 14 thirds. And in algebra, we like to just leave it like that. Mixed numbers in algebra are a problem because a mixed number is actually a whole number plus a fraction. And in algebra, when we write things next to each other, we want them to signify multiplication. Okay, so we're just gonna leave it like that. Negative 14 thirds. Now, if three could go in there, we, we could reduce it, but it doesn't. Three does not go into 14, so that is, that is our answer. Um, well, you're doing a huge favor just because it's been a while since yeah. I've been in uh, elementary school. Can you make that into what you were talking about? Make it like a whole number and then sure. just for my yeah. refresher really fast. So we could do it with long division uh, if we ever needed. And again, we know it's going to be negative. So 3 goes into 14 four times. So that's kind of a get four because four times three is 12. And then there's two left over. So the two left over gets written as two thirds. Okay, thank you. So there's a, yeah. That. What I'm gonna suggest, again, technology, you could take 14 divided by three in a calculator and it will give you sort of a similar thing. It'll give you 4.666 repeating, which then you recognize 666 as being. Well, that, but also two thirds. <laughs> I'm sorry, I had to. I know. Well, uh, the number of the beast, yeah. But there's, I guess we'll go one more, six, six, seven, so it's a different number. There we go. Okay, so we're doing good so far? Yep. Awesome. So that's solving equations. Uh, what I'm going to do is pop back over. So solving equations, we did that. There's applications of solving equations. So we're just gonna take a look. Uh, again, in the text, they kind of, you know, what I was saying is just, you know, equal sign means that they're the same. Um, if we add something to one side, we add it to the other. If we subtract something from one side, we subtract it from the other. If we multiply, we multiply. If we divide, we, whatever we do to one side, we do to the other, okay? Any of you got like cousins that are twins? I got one set, you know, you buy one an ice cream cone, what you better do to the other one. You better buy an ice cream cone for that, both of them, right? You give to one, you better give to the other. Um, okay, and then again, just some examples being worked out, just like what we did. Here's kind of a one, you know, one step, you subtract 10 from both sides, you're done. Um, subtraction, they do it. Uh, we're gonna talk about this one, because, uh, so let me pull up uh, in case we have a fraction. Let's see, let's insert my page. I guess I'll come up here. So if I had, uh, uh, let's go with, um, 4 fifths 
is an example on the page if you want to use that one. Or this um, R equals two if you want to use that one as an example. I was trying to find something different okay. so that you could, because you can look at that one. Um, and let's just, someone give me a, a fraction. What's your favorite fraction? Seven eighths. Seven eighths. I like seven eighths. Yeah, I was trying to stay away from eight, like eight sevens is not a good fraction, but seven eighths is, you know, because eights we use a lot. Um, and I'll do something where, you know, we might end up with a fraction equals 12. Okay, so 7 eighths equals 12. How do we go about solving this one? Would it be optimal to convert the fraction to a decimal? Sometimes, but sometimes that gives us a repeating decimal. Um, multiply both sides by 8. Good. So what are we doing? We're dividing by 8. So shouldn't we just multiply by 8? And we could then do that, and then we'd be left, and then we could see. But then what about that 7? What's, what are we doing with the 7? Mm -hmm. Put it on the bottom. So you'd be, you'd be, we would be multiplying 8 7. Okay. So we were multiplying by 7. We were dividing by 8. That's the way we really see the fraction. Multiplying by 7, dividing by 8. So why don't we flip it? Flip it. Multiply by 8, divide by 7. Isn't that really what? So if you think of it, then the, it'll get it done in one step. Okay. We could do it in two steps, thinking, okay, there's a multiplying by 7, dividing by 8, uh, and you could do it that way, or you just multiply by the reciprocal. Okay. And he, again, this is sometimes the place where I've got my calculus students over there that sometimes the hardest thing to have is working with fractions. It's not, you know, anything, they could do a lot of advanced math, but working with fractions, which is, you know, the basics of working with fractions, some of us still have problems, uh, okay? And so one of the things I show here is, okay, 8 divided by 8 is 1, and this gives us 7 divided by 7 is 1. So that takes care of that fraction in just one step, just flip it. But otherwise, we struggle with, yeah, we do the little piece at a time, just deal, sometimes you just want to deal with the problem all at once. Like you're pulling out a root, uh, a weed, right? It's best if you can get that whole root the first time, otherwise those roots get down there and then they grow back and you're picking it up again. Now what do we do over here with the 12 times 8 sevenths? Multiply, so 12 times 8 is 96. Seven times one. You're good. Is seven. I never memorized my twelve, so I, I no, have it's a. All good. I just okay, you. Okay, good. It's all good. <laughs> I hear you. Don't give away your secret. Yeah, good man. So we end up x equals nine, ninety-six sevenths. And again, if we wanted to understand what that number is, we could plug it in and and how you know how many holes is that and stuff. But this is a, you know, the seven go into ninety-six. I don't think so. Um, but you could try. But we could just. It's okay to leave it just like that, okay? So that's the idea, is, is when we're solving equations, we've got a fraction times of our variable, just multiply by the reciprocal, and that will take care of it. And it takes a little get, getting used to, but you'll see it's done in one fell swoop, okay? And the cool part is, is looks like we're about, with that step, we're about two-thirds through our problems. Um, the application problems, again, just kind of going through here, again, there's a lot of examples, you know, simplifying, but nothing too far that we hadn't done. We'll look at a few more examples when we get to the quiz. Um, they've got these U tries. So that's what this textbook does, is they'll give you examples, and then they give these things called these U try problems, which you try them, and then you have to go to the end to see if they, they do have the answer key to these, how you did, but it's kind of, it, it is a workbook that's designed, so for those of you who have bought it, that's really designed to be worked through. So if you go through there, that's a way to do any of the lessons. Um, see their examples, and then follow through, okay? Um, we're going to look at a few of these examples when we get to the quiz. 
But basically, it's just setting up, as, as long as we've got an equation, it's just following through, plugging in the values, and then solving. So oftentimes, we, we start with two variables, but they'll give us what one of the variables is, and we solve for the other. What if we don't know both variables? Got an equation with two variables, and we don't, we don't know, we don't, yeah. Can we solve? There's two unknowns. Yeah, we're, we can't solve, at least for a value, because there's two unknowns. We can only solve when there's only one unknown. Then we can figure out exactly what oh, that is. Oh, oh, it's, it's one that's impossible. Then. Well, I won't say it's, it's a, it would be impossible to solve for a value, because what we're going to see next is when we talk about linear equations, we'll have those where there's an x and a y, we get a line, we get a, we get a bunch of solutions, but we get when x is this, y is that. So we get what we call the ordered pairs, and that's what's going to take us to linear equations. But other than that, this, this whole section, they have to give us at least one of the variables. We plug that in, and then we can solve for the remaining variable. Okay, And we'll look at a few of those, because it's really just, all it is is doing exactly what we just did, but setting it up. Okay, ready for some technology? So I go to desmos.com backslash calculator, takes you right to the graphing calculator. And I'd write that we're going to use this tool a lot. It's actually going to do all the homework problems for you, pretty much. Okay. And so I'm going to set it up with, I'm going to actually use it to teach you about linear equations. Uh, you may already know about them, but again, I kind of said, well, let's, let's just take it from scratch. So what do we need to make a line? Two points. Mm -hmm. two po if we got two points, we can make a line. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give us two points. Um, I'm going to choose the first one. I want to do this first point as x is 0 and y is 4. And notice with this, I, so I hit the plus sign. I said, give me a table. And I can put in my points. And look, it actually graphed it. It did the graph. I'm going to come out a little bit. Somebody give me another point. Sort of um, any point. Line. That's a coordinate. Oh. So a point to get a point, what do I need? I need an x and a y. So one what? Five. One five. There we go. Oh. Okay. We got two points. I, I get how this. Works. Okay. So yeah. So think about. So now we're thinking. Yeah, we've got two variables, an x and a y. As I change one, I get the other. So now that I've got two points, how many different lines could I draw through those two points? One. One? Only one? Two. Right. Two. Just one. Just one. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. Because we're, when we say lines in math, we say straight lines. Now you think I could draw a curved line here and a curved line, but curved lines are not lines in math. So we don't even have that. So uh, there is only one because it's a straight line. If we have two points. Only one line can go through them, okay? And we kind of look here. We could kind of eyeball it, right? Um, actually, this has a little line tool in it. So I could kind of say, uh, let's see if I can, well, that's not going to work. And then I have to go back this way. So I could kind of draw one. But what, we're, what I want to do is I want to find a way to control it so that I could actually have Desmos draw this for me. Pretty sure there is a way to do that. I sure hope so. <laughs> Good. So let's think of this. Uh, where is this first point, zero, 04? What do we call that? On a graph. What, what is it, where, where do we call the location of where that point is at? The end point? It is 
could be an endpoint. And where is it located? What do we call these two main lines? The y axis. The y and the x axis, yeah. So it is actually on the y axis. Good. So this point 0.14 is on the y axis. Good. Notice x is 0, y is 4. The next point is, is at the point 0.15. So think about if if I was at the point one four, how would I explain to somebody how how do you get to the next point? If you've only got four directions that you can go. So how do I go from five to four or to there? Starting here, I go up or down or left or right? I could go right, how far? One. one, and then up one. So what that is, is something we call slope. It's kind of, how do I get from one point to the next? How far over and how far up? Um, and what we're gonna do in, in our algebra, we call that the, um, we do that as a ratio. So the up part goes in the numerator. I'll use this little Greek letter. It looks like a triangle, but it's a delta, and that means for change. So it's how, how much change do I have to go in Y over how much change in X. So notice I could go to the right one and then up one, or I could have gone up one and then to the one. So I could do it either way, but when we use it mathematically, we always talk about the Y in the numerator, the X in the denominator. Okay. Um, and I start. Well, what would I call my starting point? So if I think of X as being where the story is going, I start at four. four. Wow. Y is four when X is zero, okay? So let's just give this a try. Let's see what this does. So what if I said that y is going to, the next y, let's go with this one, would be equal to, remember I've got to go up one over one, so one divided by one, I'll do my fraction like, which is just one, right? It's getting closer. That looks about the right angle for those two, but what do I need to do? This is starting at zero and I wanted to start at four. So I do plus four. Uh, does it, doesn't it? I can connect any two lines. If, as long as I know the instructions of how to get there from one point to the other, and where do I start, right? So I can get the slope, I can get that, you know, the, the diagonal, the, the degree of it. I can get that right simply from the slope, change in y over the change in x, but I also gotta know where it's crossing the y-axis, okay? Um, let's change this point. Let's make things a little interesting. Let's go to uh, three, and should we go up or down? Um, let me make it two. We went down. So how do we draw this line? Would you like to see how we can get Desmos itself to get it? Because that's part of the problem, or that's part of what we're going to do is if I give you two points, I want you to be able to get the line to it, right? Well, I want to teach you, Desmos has a function here. So all I have to do to get that line, notice um, here that my variables are actually x1 and y1, right? So I want to reference those, so I'm going to go with y1. But instead of equals, I put something called a tilde. Now if you, it's usually right above or by the escape key on your computer. Or if you click the keyboard here, it's somewhere. How did you get the little points out of the one? I just, I just did Y and then I typed in the one. It knows to drop it down. So that's, just, that's what's kind of cool is I, you know. Um, 
You can find it here. I thought it was. Maybe I go here. Yeah, there it is. It's so it's this little tilde. So you just have to remember it's not equals. It's this tilde because it's going to go basically approximately. And then what do we want? We want something called a slope, which we'll use the letter M. And then what's the other variable? We've got Y1 and X1. And I just put X and then I just type 1. I don't even go down. It puts it in the right place. But what else did we have? Right? We did this. We did Y equals 1 over 1 X. We had to have the starting place, right? Well, we're going to just do a general plus B. Okay, we'll call that. So Y equals MX plus B. How many of you have seen that before? Hopefully, yeah. It's a, it's a general equation of line. What it did for us, though, since I referenced Y1 and X1, I got my table up here. It knows what points I'm talking about. It drew the line for me. Not only did it draw the line, what did it do for us? It gave us the answer to what's the linear equation, really. It, it's got the M. It tells us that M is negative 0.66666, which we just, from the, and, and notice I didn't do this. You chose the two, didn't you? Mm -hmm. What is 0.6666? Two thirds. So we could take it, it's a riser up. So Y is going up by two, X is going over by three. Actually, it's a negative. So what happens when we have a negative when we go to one to the other? We drop two and then run three. So see how that's working. It's got our slope here for us. Uh, and it, uh, we already knew we were starting at four. But the cool part is, is once I've got this set up, if I go back up here and I change these points, what do you think it's going to do? It changes the line. Notice how my line changed. Now I've got a slope of negative one third. But it, this is really cool because again, the homework they're going to give you two points and ask you to find the line. All you got to do is once you get this set up, come back here. Uh, I, that red lines we're not using it anymore, so why not turn it off? So you can turn them on and off this way. And we could just change these to the new problem and we're going to automatically get the equation of the line down here. Okay. And then also what's kind of cool, it gave us the starting value, y intercept is 0, 3 and notice that matches right up with what the y intercept is. We didn't have to calculate. So this is a calculating tool. What we're going to do in lesson four is we're going to give you scattered a lot more points, maybe five points, and we're trying to draw the line that fits it the best. This will do this for us as well. Okay, so we'll see that we're, we're going to expand this, the use of this tool. But if I just give you two points, it also works perfectly well how to find the equation. And notice there's two, since a we have two points, any two points. Only one line can go through it. There's only really two qualities a line has. It's sort of angle or steepness, the slope, and it, it has no bend to it because, again, remember, every line is straight. And then it's got its starting point, high or low, right? The y-intercept. Where does it cross that y? Where does it start? It starts high or start? That's the only two things from a line. And so with this equation, y equals mx plus b, the m will give us the steepness component. The b gives us, where does it start? Does it start high, low, middle, something like that, right? So we can see that that's the only two things there are. And again, as long as I've got two points, I'm going to be able to use this Desmos to come up with it. That makes it harder for if you're using your phone to do these. Although, again, the systems will work with those, but when you go to take exams, this will be available to you as well. So all the tools we use, I'm going to introduce you. When we do financial math, I've got some financial calculators. We're going to use them. You can even download them to your phone. I, in fact, I do because 
you want to calculate how much is a loan going to cost, you can do it. That's you know, I used to do financial planning 20 years ago, 30 years ago. I'm getting too old. But that's what we did. We had financial calculators. We didn't try to do it in our heads because you might get something wrong. Although my boss was pretty good at that, I wasn't. Financial calculators. So we're going to introduce you to tools. You'll, anything we use in class, you can use on the exam as well. Also, as we go forward, just remember, if I hadn't, uh, when we do take exams, you get a page of notes. So we'll go through the review together. You'll have your page of notes that will kind of help guide you through things, and we're going to do just fine. All right. Um, how far are we? We're... So again, this will talk about it, you know, rate of change. That's what we call the slope because that's what that steepness represents how much one thing is changing in relationship to another. So it allows us to talk about two different variables. Um, how fast are we going? Miles per hour, right? We can talk about you know, how fast we're getting things. Uh, linear equations. If you're paid hourly, if you work five hours and you got paid $10 per hour, how much did you make? Five times 10, $50. Okay, so there's all those type of problems are brought in here or considered in here uh, with this simple linear equation. Um, the, this talks about, yeah, if that line's going up, we call that increasing and it's gonna, and notice the slope is gonna be positive. When the slope was negative, it means it's decreasing and going down. So there's, we pick up these things. And if the slope is zero, it's like level ground, it's horizontal. And then vertical is, is what we call undefined because actually it's division by zero. So you'll see homework problems where they'll give you the equations. Um, from the equation, where do we find the slope? If you're looking here, this three, where do you see the three in the equation? Right in front of the X. So look for the X. Next to the X, that's going to be your slope. Um, the vertical intercept or the Y intercept where it crosses the Y, where do we find that? That's the number by itself. It could be the second one. It could be, it's, the order's not important, but it's the number that does not have a variable. That's going to be your Y intercept. Because notice if you plug in zero for X, you get Y equals five. So that's, that's always going to happen. So down here, again, they switch order. What's our slope? Well, it's the number in front of the x, but there's no number in front of the x. It's just a minus x. What does that mean? Slope is negative 1. Okay, so you'll see that the, the equation actually tells you how to do it. And that's why I like doing it with the Desmos. You can put in an equation. It will draw it for you. And you'll see as you change that slope from positive to negative, positive will go uphill negative will go downhill. Um, change the y-intercept. It'll move it up or down. What if there is nothing? So y equals 2x. Slope is 2, but what's the y-intercept? 0. Yeah, plus 0. You could put that plus 0 if that helps. Good. And what if there is no x? That means mean that the number in front of the x is zero because that's the thing when you multiply by zero it's going to give a zero so it makes it disappear so those are sometimes the harder ones because you go wait y equals negative eight where's where's the x where's the mx it's really zero x uh so yeah the slope is zero but it disappears and that's the thing with algebra the disappearing stuff the one before the x it's always there but it's not uh, when something's zero and we're multiplying it disappears but we could say, okay, this is, so this is gonna be a horizontal line that goes through y equals negative eight, so it's down there. And again, the cool part is, is go ahead and use Desmos. Um, we can clear these ones out, and we could just, we could graph that. We could say, well, what does y equals negative eight look like? Oh, I got it turned off, so I better turn it on. It looks like that. It's a horizontal line, right? And I could just verify that that is plus zero x. That's the same line. I, I could write it that way, because zero x is zero, which is 
doesn't need to be there. Same thing. So play with it this way and use the tools. Uh, you could use a TI, if you got TI-84, it'll do the same thing. I just, um, Desmos has been nice because it's got color, it's got, uh, it's a full screen. It's, it's got all these, you know, you can zoom in and out real easily with your mouse if you've got a mouse wheel or something. Um, or you could come over here and zoom in and out. Uh, and it's got a lot of features. And it, the main thing is, is being able to do this. So this is the part you're probably going to want to write down. Uh. This, little, this little equation, the little tilde especially. Um, however, I'll give you a little hint. Wait. I'll come back. Okay. But I want to show you. There's an app. There's an app. Desmos made an app version. Yeah, and the, yeah, Desmos does have an app, so that yeah. Yeah, there's it's, an app version of the calculator. Yes. So you don't have to do that in your phone browser. <laughs> right, right. Um, if you go down to chapter four, regression with Desmos, there's actually a video in here that that will walk you through it. So if you forget, you could. But we're going to not show you. This is more complicated, but. Um, yeah, this little y1 tilde m x1 plus b. If you, you know, you're going to program that in there. Uh, notice when I go into Desmos, it, it knows my name because I've, I've actually signed in. I use my ASU, but both ASU and, and Maricopa, we, we use uh, Google accounts. So your, e your student email is a Google account. And that's my teaching stuff is Google accounts. You can sign into this. Uh, so the first time you go in, you'll if you sign in like with your Google account, what it'll do is then you can save stuff, and I've got I've got all these things saved over here. So what I would do, you know, starts as you start working through these things. Once you, you know, save that as something, and then regression or, or line, just call it line. Come back, you just pull it up. And it, it'll have everything you have here. So, you, you know, have a table, X1, Y1. Now, if I put a second table, what do you think is going to happen to the X and the Y? Yeah. What do you think if I put in a second table, since so the first table is X1, Y1, what do you think the second it's table? It's going to become X2, Y2. Exactly. It doesn't. So if I want to make an equation based off of that, I just have to have x2, y2. In. So just watch those. Make sure your variables are matched up. Uh, if you just put one, that's what I tried to do. You don't have to worry about it. It's going to be x1, y1. But I'll just show you. Yeah, if I put in a second one, now it's giving me, it's giving me a different color too, x2, y2. So I, you know, I can do multiple things with this, but just be sure that you're referencing the right variables. And you can also just get rid of stuff that you don't want. Oh, I don't want that anymore. I don't want that anymore. Um, so this is, for, for this lesson, this is a, the main part you need, is you need to insert a table where you can put your two points and then have this little calculating thing here where it will actually calculate the, the equation of the line for you. Okay, so we're kind of skipping over some of the stuff, but I want you to experience it this way, just using the technology, you'll get a better feel for linear equations. And then we'll come back and for a few things we can show yeah, we can all do it by hand if we needed to, but uh, this works pretty powerfully. Any questions? So what should we do next? Are you all game for going through the quiz? Yep. All right, let's go through the quiz. So I'll pull it up. Again, you're welcome to pull it up, but your numbers may be a, will be a little different. They always are. They're diff mine are different than yours. Yours are different than your neighbors. Uh, so you might just want to take notes on this. And then again, um, and it says you only have two attempts for each of question, so be careful. Um, but let's just see what we're. OK. So let me make it a little bit larger with that help. And again. Oh, let's see. There we go. OK. 
Okay. So we've got this equation to solve. What should we do first? Any suggestions? Okay. Yeah, usually we would try maybe think of adding the nine, but because it's in the fraction, um, thinking really we got a parentheses around this, right? Is that really what's happening? So if we multiply both sides by five, then we're getting that gone. So the, the fraction's gone. We now have a minus nine. Eight times five is 40. 40. Now what should we do? Add nine. And then add the nine. And again, you'll get, your setup will be very similar to this. You just may have some different numbers. 49, enter our answer, check our answer, and we got it. Okay. Oh wait, so do you not multiply by five? Or? No, we did, we multiply oh. both. But when we, the, the thing is, is when we're solving, one of the things, like we multiply on one side, it just makes things disappear, right? Because we got five divided by five, so it doesn't, we, yeah, on the left side it just disappeared, but on the right side we got eight times five, which is 40. Oh, okay, gotcha. And then just add the nine and we're good. All right. So far so good? Okay. Let's see, we've got six. Usually they give us six. Uh, and again, on all of these, get it to 70% of the points. Um, what I'm doing in the grade book, I think they're each worth 15, so that's like, get it to, in the Canvas grade book, if it shows up at 10.5, it gets bumped up to 15. So get, but in, as you're working through these, you're gonna want to get to 70%, at least. Okay, so this is what I was talking about. This is one of the examples from the text, so that's why we didn't work an example. I knew we'd have one here. So I got a lot of words, but what are we going to look for first? The equation. The equation. We don't want to read a bunch of stuff, and we just want to get to the equation. So I got some equation here. That's what I want to focus on. And then I'm going to keep reading after the equation. Okay, so this formula gives the recommended maximum heart rate M. So now I know what M is. What is M? It's the maximum heart rate. Okay, so I didn't have to read the first part. In beats per minute, that makes sense, your heart rate in beats per minute. For a person who's A years of age, now that you just have to kind of get used to that, that A is the variable. So it's how old is the person? How many, what's their maximum heartbeat, right? See, I didn't have to read a bunch of stuff. I just thought, okay, I got an equation. What are the two variables? Now do you kind of got a feel for what it is. The front part is all about the story. And a lot of times, remember from what I thought at the beginning, that goes to the amygdala, that goes to your emotional memory. I think, ah, I never liked gym class. I always, I was always the last kid chosen, I was this or that. So you got all this emotional stuff going on where I wanna solve this problem. I go to the equation, okay, I got this equation. And actually, I'm gonna rewrite the equation down here. Now we got a parenthesis in here, but we'll deal with it as we can. And then, now's, now's the instructions. Determine the age of a person whose target rate is 148 beats per minute. So, determine the age, so that's telling us what we're looking for, right? So that says A is what we're gonna so find. we have to plug in 148 for A. Well, no, no, right? For oh, for M. M because M is the beats per minute. So that oh, good. Oh, okay, gotcha. So we'll erase the M because they gave that to gotcha. us. Good. Okay. Now we just solve for A. And notice how I could kind of shortcut. I didn't even go back to the beginning part to read it. You could, depending if you're curious. But a lot of times you just find that equation and you find out what those variables are, you have enough understanding and you get quicker to the point and you didn't get lost in those first few parts 
And when, this is the one I always use because my sister did this to me several times when I was a kid. Anyone do, ever had this happen to sister, your brother starts telling you the story? Okay, the kids are waiting for the, the school bus, the, the blue bus stuff. The blue bus is coming to pick up the kids. First bus stop, five kids get on. Got that? Next bus stop, 10 kids get on. Next stop, three kids get off. Last stop, five kids get on. Got all that? Question is, what color was the bus? Okay, so you got, so I always forget it because I was, I was adding and subtracting. You didn't have to. So when you know what the question is, you don't get lost in all this. That, that's my story. Is that a lot of times a story, you get, you don't know what you're looking for, right? And so you're thinking this and that, and you start adding all these numbers. You never need, you, the answer was given to you right off. And you got it. I never did. My sister did it more than once to me. That just tells you how it was. I should have. Anyway. Okay. So now that we know we just need to solve for A. So what would we do here? There we go. We could distribute it through and deal with it like that, but it's like it's there's a there's parts here. Couldn't we again the whole goal is we want to get A by itself. So let's just get we could always whatever we can do anything we want as long as we do it to both sides and it's you know so I could divide by this now. See that's kind of opposite of what I told you before, right? We can actually because it's sticking out there. Um, because usually order of operations says you do what's inside the parentheses first, right? So we're, we're doing its opposite. We're do outside the parentheses first. Because we're I rebellious. Know, I'm, I'm, I'm a rule person. So I know. Like when you so do now this, we're I'm going to like, break all the on, rules. Dude. This is, yeah, this is for those. So, so now we have 185 equals 220 minus A. So this is 185? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Because I, again, I have to bust out the calculator. And then Wait, this, how does 148 divided by 0.8 equal 185? I have 1,850. 1,850. What? Well, what? because you guys, so um, you guys probably multiply. You want to divide. Yeah, 185. I did divide. Yeah, okay. Well, for the ones that they got, they got a bigger number. So you want to do 148 divided by 0.8. And that's 185. So. How, how's that 185? Like, honestly, just, just don't question it. Just plug it in, 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 plug yeah, it in the calculator. Whatever, I, I did that. Yeah. I, I'm just confused how it got, how you got a bigger number when you're dividing it by. Because like you're a, dividing by a decimal. When you divide by decimals, it actually does get bigger. So that's, really? Yeah, we always think that division gives us a smaller number. But when it's when it's less than one, when you divide by less than one, you actually get more. Uh, I think we're putting it in. It's, well, don't think too much. Sometimes you just got to do. It. <laughs> yeah. So it's just kind of yeah. But that that's cool that you you know wait this doesn't feel right. I'm dividing. I should get a smaller number, but it doesn't always happen. I got 185. Yeah. So then we get 185 equals 220 minus a. There we go. Now what do we do? We subtract 220 from both sides. Perfect. What do you do to one side, do to the other. And so this cancels. I'm running out of space. What's 185 minus 220? Negative 35. Wait a minute. I thought that, how can anybody be negative 35 years old? So that means A equals 35, because if negative A equals negative 35, then A is 35. Very good. The other way to think about it is there's really a negative 1 in front of the A. So if you want to think of mathematically, how would I do that? I divide both sides by negative 1. But that's also a good way. If negative A is negative 35, positive A is positive 35. It's exactly right. So this person. Maximum heartbeats of 148 is for a 35 year old. Okay, does that make sense? Okay, so that, you know, again, when you solve these things, 
don't don't read the whole thing. That's what I'll, I'll read it and read it again and understand it. No, find your equation, and then find out what those variables are, and then read as you need if you want to. But a lot of word problems they have all this stuff that's just you know because you got oh well pulse rate of eighty percent of your maximum. Where's well what's that eighty percent? It's in the formula. The point eight is eighty percent. We don't need it. You know if you want to you can, but again the formula will tell you a lot. So we'll check our answer, just make sure we get them right. Clear off this stuff. Uh, find the slope. Okay, so how could I do this one? Um, I'm going to show you two ways. What did, we, what did I show you these the first time? Okay, so let's do that first. So the point 0.52 and the other point is 10.7. I'm going to go back to my decimals since I've got it set up. If you didn't, you know. But this is how, this is why I'm going to encourage you to, what were the points now? 5.2? Yeah, 5.2. Um, how did you get the, the, the dot thing again on decimals? The dot? <coughs> oh, oh. Like one, one, one. thank you. Oh, um, you just ask for a table. Okay. So five two, and then I go back and ten seven. So we're gonna do it with technology, and then I'm gonna also show you a way from seven thousand years ago, five thousand years ago. So I put it in. Notice, let's see. This looks like 5, 2, yeah. So we can zoom in maybe a little bit more. So it drew the point so quick. It's given this to me, and it gives me my equation of that line, right? M is 1, B is negative 3, so what's that equation? Well, we don't need the equation of the line, but what's the slope? 1, very good. So it gave it to us there. It's 1. Come back here. I could put in my one. I'm going to show you one other way to do it. Um, Would you do the rate of change? Or? Right. So the formula you'll see, and I'm, I'm not actually going to use the formula, but it's y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Okay. So notice we've got all those values. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take one of the points. I'll go with 10, 7. And I'll write the other point just below it. What is the first coordinate? That's your x. The second coordinate is your y. So notice I'm going to take, I'm going to just line them up because it's easier for me to do this way. I'm going to take the second, I'm going to take the first point and subtract the second coordinate. So what's 10 minus 5? What's 7 minus 2? And then since the first one is the x, what I'm going to do is I'm going to tuck it underneath the y. So it's 5 over 5, which is 1, one which we figured out. Same thing. This is this is a method from Vedic math. It's called vertically and crosswise. So notice vertically we went, we subtracted down, and then crosswise we had to tuck the x underneath. I found this works for me because I'm dyslexic. When I use the y2 minus y1 and x2, I, I messed that up so many different ways. Oh, I'm just curious. Uh, would you be able to use Desmos on an exam in the future? I sure hope you would. Yes. Yeah, you will be able to. Well, I hope you. I mean, in this class. Yes. Oh, okay, sweet. Yes. So, um, so I mean, would you pull the Desmos again just so I can see what the value of, the, of like what the thing represents the slope is? Oh, it's, uh, slope is M? Is M. Okay. If you want to call it S, you could. It's it, They call it M because it's uh, it comes from the German, German, I guess, slope in German is, starts with an M. That's the, I, don't, I don't speak German, or my brother took German in high school, but that's what I was told. Um, 
you were able to take German in high school? Well, I was. I didn't take any foreign language in high school, but my brother did. My brother studied German in four years oh, of high school. He's, gotcha. I studied Arabic in college for a year. Uh, Forgot most of what I knew, but that was a cool language. Uh, we good? Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm pretty sure in high school now you could only take French and Spanish. Could be. Or like Chinese, I think. They're, they're getting yeah. some variety there, yeah. Yeah, but I don't think they do German in high schools. Maybe not. Okay, so that was three. We're good. So, yeah, we'll use Desmos. Um, now, this one we don't necessarily need to do. So, what's the rate of, so again, these are going to be looking at the equation. We should be able to pick out the rate of change in the initial value. So, what's our rate of change for this one? Uh, 9x. Just the 9. So, it's, you're right, it's, it's the number in front of the x. That's it. What's our initial value or our y va our y intercept? Um, three, negative minus three. three. So we do take the sign with it too. So it's the three, but it is a negative three. And then the behavior is it going? Is it increasing, decreasing? Is it vertical or is it horizontal? We get that from the rate, right? Positive rate means it's, it's increasing. increasing. Just step through these. How about the second one? What's our rate of change? Negative Good. I was going to go with nine, but I missed the negative, so yes. So it's the number in front of the variable. Again, it's not always x, but uh, so that. And then what would be the initial value? Seven. Seven, the number by itself. And is this going to be increasing, decreasing, or something? Decrease. Decreasing because of the slope. Yeah, the rate's negative nine. Good. Uh, rate of change on the fourth one? Four. Four, excellent, because that's in front of a variable. This is a little harder to see, because what would be our starting value, since there's nothing there? Zero. Must be zero, right? Because we could put a plus zero. And what's happening here? Are we increasing, decreasing? Increasing. Increasing because of the positive four. Good, good. So, um when would it be horizontal, or would it only be that if there was no 4a or whatever, if there was no slope? Would it, let's take a look at this last okay, one. Sorry, good. No, 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 that's good. You're perfect time to ask that question, uh, and perfect result. So what's the rate of change for this last one? Zero. Zero, because there is no second variable. There's no x, there's, so that's a zero. And that means it's horizontal, right, because uh, that's kind of, think of, it's a, you know, increasing is going up a hill, decreasing is going down the hill, horizontal is zero. So uh, if it was an X, it would be vertical? Right, right. If it's X equals some number, that's when, yeah, the Y is gone. So that, it's good, good. And then uh, what's our initial value? Negative eight, because that's all that's there. And then this one, we can say, yeah, that's going to be the horizontal. And yeah, if we have an X equal, that's, the only, that's when we get a, a vertical line. We'll check our answers, and of course we're all right. So, but that, that's the thing, is just from looking at the equation, be able to pull those things out. If you weren't sure, what could we do? We could actually put these equations into Desmos, and it would graph it for us, and we could, you know, and I think that's a good activity. If you can't visualize these, get with Desmos, because it'll help you build that visualization. You know, that first one, 9x minus 3. Just go to Desmos, turn off this stuff. Let's just go, you just click here, pi equals 9x minus 3. Well, there it is. And then what's cool is when you click down here, it even gives you the y-intercept. You know, So Desmos does that, gives you the x-intercept. Oh, it's a pretty steep line. It's got a slope of 9. It's increasing, though. So you can always, um, and take the time you need so that you can actually start visualizing them um, and maybe even graphing them. Got two more, and then we're clear to go. Oh, so this one, we've got an equation. It's a balance in your college payment account. So now, okay, so this is a linear equation though, right? Really, y equals mx plus b. They're using c and q instead of x if you want. 
you can always come and rewrite this as really just y equals 1680, 16,800 minus 2,100x, just if that helps. Sometimes, because you get all these other letters. So there's a slope. What's the slope of this equation? 2100. 2100. What kind of 2100? Uh, oh, negative. negative. So always, yeah, I always, that's good. So it's negative, so that means what's happening to this account? Decreasing. It's decreasing. And sometimes you just click on those, then you know what they're asking. So yes, this is a decreasing, of that because then now you know to look at the negative. And what's the rate of the decrease? 2100. Now here's the thing, you want to enter 2100 because it's already saying it's oh, a decrease. You, yeah. No, you don't oh, want to no. put negative 21, cause I, and I figured that's out by getting it wrong several times. It doesn't want the negative there because the word decreasing says it for us. Uh, and that will be, what is that, represents the balance of your college payment account after Q quarters. So that is going to be dollars per quarter, right? Q is how many quarters? I think it's it's decreasing at a rate of, yeah, each quarter it's going to reduce by 2100. So we've got to tie in the um, what the variables mean. Interpret the initial value of the situation. So initial value is the y-intercept. So that's the number that's by itself. So where does that go? In the dollar spot. Then it's in the dollar spot. What is this asking? After blank quarters, the balance of this account. So if it's the initial value, how many quarters have we been in school? Zero. Good. This is a tricky one. We haven't started yet, so this initial value has always got to be zero. Good. Good. And then how many quarters will this account pay for? So this now we got to do some math. So this is tying back, actually solving. Um, you can pay for blank quarters before the money in this account is gone. Okay. So when the money in the account is gone, how, where does that go? That means that y is the value in the account, right? Or the UC. It's the balance. So what we're looking for is when will we have zero dollars? We have the account. I'll just use x because I like to use x. So what do we do to figure out how do we solve this for x? Add 16 we will to the other side. But yeah, before we divide, we want to get rid of the sub yeah. So we'll subtract the 1600 first or 16,000 first. From both sides. So we get negative 16,800 equals -2100x. And then what do we do? Now we divide, right? Because we're multiplying by x, so we divide by the negative 2100. And this is definitely where we're going to want our calculator. A negative divided by negative will be positive. But doesn't that make sense if it costs us 2100 per quarter? We just we sort of do the division. You might have thought your way through this, and that would be fine. Um, it's 8. It's eight. Yes. Okay. So I'll just yeah we'll do we'll go through this so you see it. Those people who are on the other end. Hopefully it's all recording fine. And I don't I don't since I know it's going to be negative or positive. I I just I don't put in the negatives. But eight. So it's going to last us for eight quarters. Hopefully we graduate by then. But that's so that's once we've got these linear equations, we can now solve them. Um, we'll check our answer and we got it all right. Okay, and again, on your quiz, you may have slightly different 
numbers in there, but the process is going to be the same. So the setup of the question is going to be the same. Ready for our last one? And again, the homework, it really, again, just look for, you, all you need is 70%. You could work it all the way you want, but look at it as opportunities to practice uh, the concepts and get there. So this one, we're kind of asked to set things up, right? So in 1990, the cost of tuition, a large metropolitan university was 193 per credit hour. Oh, can you go back real quick to the last problem, just for quickly, I just need to get something down. Uh, uh, just, yeah. Okay, so I'll just highlight a few things. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome, of course, anytime. So we, when you see the word per, what are you, what does that lead you to think about? So $93 per, what's that? A variable. What else when we're talking linear equations? We're getting there. <laughs> Miles per hour. What what is that? Dollars per hour if you're paid that way. That's our rate of change. So it's yeah, it's gonna it's signifying a, a rate of change, which is also gonna be our slope. So in the equation, when I see that per word, a lot of times I'm going to say, okay, that must be my rate of change. Good. Um, so again, those are just kind of hint words that, okay, that's probably my slope. Uh, tuition had risen. So in 1999, tuition had risen to 219 per credit hour. Okay, maybe it's not, a, but so what do we got here? Nineteen. Let's see. Let me just get this thing out of the way. Let's see if I can. Move it up. So night. So we got basically two time periods. And then in That's a big jump. $93 to $219. And now that I kind of said that that was probably, or could be, the slope, since we've got two of those numbers, those are actually what we've got as a year and how much it costs per tuition, per, per quarter, per credit hour, right? What I'm going to introduce you to, in math, a lot of times what we do with years Aren't those kind of big numbers to work with? If you work with those as your X, you know, it's 1990 is 2000. 
So what we do a lot of times is we say, okay, whatever the starting year is, we'll make that year zero. Right? Does that kind of make sense? So what we can do is instead of calling this 1990, we could call that year zero. And then if 1990 was year zero, what is 1999? Nine. Nine years down the road. See, perfect. And it's a lot of times that's an easy way to do it. And these are easier numbers to work with. So we picked out that we got two points. How do we get the linear equation? Desmos. Desmos, our friend. You've got to give us all our answers. So we just put our two points in there, right? And again, remembering it was 0 and 93. Is that right? Yeah. Oops. And then um, 9 and 200, 219. And as soon as I do that, it's going to graph it. I don't see it because I'm too close in here, right? So, but I can move it around. Uh, the thing I'm going to show you is, if I move that up, but there's this little gear thing here. Since I know I'm going from, my X is going from zero to nine, we're fine that way. But I know I'm going from 93 to 219, right? So I can, why does it keep doing that to me? Let's see. So I'm going to make this uh, 250. And notice I can see my two points there. Let me get this line out of the way. I have my line turned off. That's why I don't see it. So I'm going to turn it back on. The other thing I'm going to show you, if, I, if I, I'm clicking and holding on the, the thing, you can change the color of this line to an, anything you want. Make it orange or whatever. And same thing with the, the points. If you want the points to be a different color, you just click and hold. Uh, let's make them blue. Let's make them purple, whatever you want to do. Uh, so that's kind of fun. But I've got the line now, and what does it tell me? Because my slope is 14. My y-intercept's 93, and does, does that make sense? Because in year zero, 1990, it was 93, so that's, that really was, they gave us a y-intercept. But in, uh, the slope is 14, so what does that mean? Each year, the cost went up by $14 a year. So now I kind of have all those things down, and I can come back, put my equation is going to be 14, and instead of x, we're going to use q, because that's the variable they gave us. And our starting value was $93. And notice they did this the number of years since 1990. So that means 1990 was year zero, is that's what they've done. If we didn't do that, we wouldn't be able to match. Oh, they didn't like. Oh, see, they use q up there, and now they want us to use x. But they, at least they tell us, I was looking this red, they say syntax here, notice, in terms of x, the number of years. Where did I get q? Oh, I'm thinking of that last problem, I think. Oh, yeah. Uh, so I'm, I'm making up, so sometimes you, okay, there, now it likes it. But that's kind of cool, they give you those things. So far, so good? Yeah, so um, remind me again, 14 and 95, I find this one for a second so I can see. Okay. So yeah, it's going to give us, so our m will always be our slope, our rate, y-intercept is given to us that way too. So now I can just put it in here. Is that good? Okay. In the year 2003, tuition will be what per credit hour? So how do we do that? So 2003 is what kind of, in our equation, what where does that go? It's a number of years, right? And what, where are we starting? 1990. So how many years is 2003 from 1990? 13. 13. So we're going to plug in 13 for x, right? So now that we've got our equation, 
um, let's see, is this thing still? We going to put in that our cost will be, we're going to plug in 13 for X. Wait, why is it 13 again? Uh, 2003, and we're starting with ninth at the year 1990. Oh, gotcha. So you kind of you could just subtract the two years. It's 13 years difference. Gotcha. So 14 times 13, because it went up by 14 dollars for 13 years, right? Each year, and then add the 93. What do we get with that? Two hundred and seventy-five. Okay. Doesn't that make sense that it should be more than what it was in nineteen ninety-nine, right? Because we've got this two hundred nineteen. We know it's got to be more than that because it's another few years. And you could also think of it as four years down from nineteen ninety-nine. Since we okay, we need to add four years times fourteen. You could you could do it in multiple ways thinking through there. Um, and then this last year, in what year? Will tuition be 401? How do we solve that one? Plug in 401 for C. There we go. So 401. And again, this one, we're just going to have a little bit of a trick to it. Um, how do we solve for X? Uh, minus 93 on both sides. Subtract 93. That would come out to 308. And then divide by 14. Wait, how'd you get 308? 401 oh. minus 93. Oh, okay. Divide both sides by 14. gives us 22. 22. Very good. Does that mean 22 is our answer? No, because that's the year, so I need to plug it back in. So it's 22 years since 1990. So that's what I always get these wrong too. I put in the 22. Oh, that's not the answer yet. I have to add that to 1990. So I'm going to add 1990. 22, so that's 2, 9 and 2 is 11, so it's 2012, right, 2012. So that's that's one of the things, it's, it's easier to work with years since a particular time, so we have those those X's, but then you got to remember, i got to convert back to the actual year. Should I check the answer? Any questions? Hey, we got it all right. Okay, um, and again, your numbers may be a little different. But. but it's that process of solving equations, finding linear equations. Go ahead and use decimals because it's good practice. Really, what that's what lesson four is going to be. So as you get comfortable with it, by the time you get to lesson four, you're going to be cruising through it. So because we add a little bit more to lesson four, and uh, so next Tuesday, work day, come if you'd like. Have a good time. Sometimes we order pizzas. Well, we haven't done that yet, but we might. We never know get hungry sometimes. Thank you. Thank you guys. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, um, Dr. Wilson. My pleasure, Daniel. Thank you. Thank you. The quiz isn't timed, right? No, it's not. You can leave it open all the, as long as you want. Yes. Oh, okay. Um, is it fine if I take it in here? Sure. Okay. Yeah, we got another 
how long we got? 25 I, minutes? Oh, okay. Yeah. I just want to do it while my memory is fresh. That's a good idea. That's what we're here for. Um, I, was, I was at the, um, the tutoring for math the other day, and there yeah. was a professor named Martha. She wanted me to tell you she said hi. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I love Martha. She's great to work. Thank she's you. Really nice. Yeah, yeah. 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 Martha's, Martha's great.